Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to another Writing Wednesday. And today I want to do something a bit different. Instead of giving you like writing tips and tricks, you know, the more common things, I want to give you the reason that a lot of us here on YouTube give you writing tips and tricks. Let's talk a little bit about the science, what actually goes on in your brain, why storytelling is so powerful, how stories actually work, and in general, the science behind storytelling. <laughs> First, let me say this video is brought to you by my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for the continued support. Also, by the way, I have opened a Ko-fi page as well, so all those links will be in the description below. And you can also just join the channel as a member as well. I really appreciate all the support in any way, shape, or form as we try to figure out this new YouTube algorithm. And by the way, if you're new here, my name is Chris, and I'm working on my fantasy debut novel, The Crimson Gods, which I happen to have a copy right here printed out, most of it anyway. I am working on version three. I don't know if you guys can see this. But this is about three quarters of the book here as I'm going through uh, version three to prepare to send off to be edited properly. I do have an editor now, I believe. Uh, so that will be happening here in a few months. They are kind of booked out. So anyway, I'm working on that. I do have a Indiegogo campaign I'm about to open as well to kind of help uh, support this project. Uh, the editing is going to be the most expensive part. Cover art as well as uh, character art, all kinds of goodies and stuff we're going to have. So think about joining Patreon. All that information will be available there or become a beta reader for that matter. And for all those updates, of course, you can follow me on social media or you can also head over to the author website there and sign up for our newsletter. I do send a newsletter out about once a week or so, usually on Wednesdays or Thursdays in conjunction with these videos for updates on the book itself, writing tips and tricks, new blog posts, all that good stuff as well. So anyway, let's jump into it. The science behind storytelling. I'm kind of a science guy. I believe there's a science to everything, including writing, and I believe that's why you have all these tips and tricks video you tutorials on YouTube. You have all these books written about how to write better, how to improve your writing. So I started digging a little bit more into kind of the psychological thing. So this won't be a typical tips and tricks video, but more of a principles video as to why we give you all these tips and tricks. So stories are incredibly powerful and they can actually produce physiological changes in your brain. For an example, I started digging into this a little bit more and found an old BBC video that I'll link in the description below as well. And they cover different psychological concepts that these people studied on how stories actually affect your brain. So let's talk about those first, and then we'll go over some principles to keep in mind as you're writing your book. Number one, we have assimilation. Essentially, assimilation is where the reader takes on the qualities of a fictional group. Dr. Zoe Walkington talks in that video and she discovered some research papers and those papers themselves stated that people that read just a few chapters of the Harry Potter books actually ranked themselves higher than other people who had not on possibly being able to move things with their mind. And I would imagine something like that would go for like Star Wars fans as well. Another really interesting example that she cited here was that people who read a few chapters from the book Twilight thought that their own teeth were slightly longer than that of the average population. And number two, transportation. This is when the reader essentially gets lost in this fictional world. Now, if you watch this channel for any length of time here, we've all experienced this. I used to cover Game of Thrones and Song of Ice and Fire predominantly on this channel, as well as Star Wars as well. And we still do all that, by the way. I mean, a lot of us for many, many years were lost in Westeros, and we kind of yearned to go back. And I think this is one of the reasons that we can't really get over the fact that this whole damn thing has ended. And although many of us didn't really like how it ended, I think many of us yearn to go back, and I'm sure we certainly will with a new show coming out, even though it's a prequel called House of the Dragon. And number three, identification. This is where a reader actually takes on the perspective and identity of a character in a fictional story. So in essence, the things that are happening to the character are happening to us, the reader, and this is believed to be linked to our ability to empathize with others. So what actually happens in our brains during these three things while we're reading? So apparently some neuroscientists from Cambridge also took a look at this and scanned people's brains as they read. So for example, if you read the word jump or run, the same part of your brain kind of lights up, so to speak, as when you actually run or jump yourself. And this is a theory that gets into something called mirror neurons. And these apparently are neurons that are triggered when we're watching the activities of others. And some scientists actually believe that these neurons are actually responsible for empathy in the first place. So I think we've all experienced this as well. You may smile when a character is really happy. Or on the other hand, you may feel sadness when a character is going through something sad in the story. So I definitely think we've all felt this at some point, whether reading a book, watching a movie, or a TV show. And number four, parasocial relationships. This is when you actually form some type of relationship with a fictional character. Now, of course, that doesn't mean you're walking around crazy talking to them, 
that would be a little weird. But we think of these characters as almost real people, and studies have shown that this can actually improve our mood and help us feel less lonely. And number five, change through stories. So research has actually shown that stories, as opposed to a regular conversation or an argument, are much more effective in changing people's minds. For example, there was a study in Italy, I believe it was, where children read Harry Potter, and after doing so, they seemed to show less prejudice towards actual immigrants. So these are just a few examples I find pretty damn fascinating. I feel like it may be a little bit more effective in visual storytelling like movies and TV because we can see and hear what the character is going through, what's going on around them. I think we've all teared up watching a movie or yelled at the screen watching TV. So imagine writing like that where you evoke those same audiovisual senses as if somebody were watching a movie that really gets the readers immersed in your world, empathizing with your characters and villains for that matter. So I believe if we can write this way, eliciting some of that deep emotion, just imagine the limits. Yeah, there are none. So how do we actually write like that then? Well, of course, you know, you watch all the tips and tricks videos on this channel, by the way, because all these are based in this science behind writing a story. But here are a few principles and examples to keep in mind while writing that are not really standard writing advice or tips and tricks. Number one is constant change. At its core, that's all a story actually is, are things constantly changing. So when you write change or the threat of change, so to picture this, you know, imagine yourself just walking down the street, you know, you're in your own world, minding your own business, and you hear a loud noise or you hear your name called. What are you going to do? You're going to immediately turn around and look in that direction. Not because you really want to necessarily, because you have to, because your brain is wired to do this, because this is a threat assessment. So write with this in mind. And for a couple of pretty neat examples of this, these are first lines in novels, but think about a couple of books you've probably already read here. Number one, Harry Potter. Mr. and Mrs. Doosley of number four, Pivot Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. Now think about that sentence. That's the opening sentence of the book, so that's pretty damn powerful. It's basically threatening change. We are perfectly normal, thank you very much, and therefore you have to know, wait a minute, why are they not going to be normal? So you have to have the answer to that question. You have to assess the threat of change. And another from George Orwell is 1984. It was a bright cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. Now that sentence is actual change, because clocks don't strike 13. So those are pretty powerful examples of opening lines in novels. So think about this type of thing, writing your whole damn book. And number two, cause and effect. Since a story is nothing but change, just continue the change with cause and effect. Each thing changing leads to the next thing changing and so on and so on. And I think a good way to help kind of understand how this works in our brain from a storytelling perspective is think about the human race in and of itself and why our brains like this in the first place. We were all hunters and gatherers. Humans hung out in groups or tribes and hunted and gathered together. But how would these tribes or groups maintain order? How would they police themselves? Well, they used stories and gossip. So because there was a threat of being gossiped about in a negative way, you essentially policed yourself for the most part. And if you do that where you put the tribe ahead of yourself, you are the protagonist. Protagonists are usually described as selfless, because you put the needs of the group ahead of yourself and therefore that's seen in a good light. On the other hand, those that don't are called antagonists because they put themselves ahead of the group. So those people are typically described as selfish as opposed to selfless. So because they put themselves ahead of the tribe, they are talked about in a negative light. But remember that antagonist also thinks they are doing the right thing because that's all a villain is, is the hero of their own story. And number three, morality. When you hear this type of thing like gossip, you want to find out what happens. You want to find out if the person being talked about got what they deserved. Did the victim of this small story get their perceived justice? So essentially the morality in everything is what keeps people turning the page or finishing the damn movie. Our brains have evolved for us to understand the world through stories. So it kind of bothers me when you're talking about something, people say, well, it's not real, or it's only a story, or it's just a fictional character. And sure, they are not real, but the concepts are, and the emotions they evoke are, and it all deepens our understanding. I actually have a video about a year or so old about finding purpose through fantasy, which I think is a pretty damn good video you ought to check out. So I'll leave that link in the description below or pop it up right over here. So essentially think about it this way. Stories are not the invention of some caveman with a hammer and chisel or some ancient dude with a quill and ink, but rather stories are the product of biological evolution. So is your story important? Hell yes, it's important. They help create empathy. They help reduce loneliness. Hell, they can reduce prejudice and be persuasive and much, much more. And thinking about all this stuff from this perspective, actually how stories work in our brains, how they affect us physiologically, kind of makes me want to go read more. Anyway, guys, click right over here for more writing tips and tricks videos, or you can click right over here for more videos. We do cover TV shows and movies on this channel as well. We're all about stories. So anyway, if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and a share. And also be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.